<coughs> All right, I think that's all up and running. Although I'd like to make sure I get a. Uh, Uh, get my dev tools showing. Is it this one that should do? That's uh, that's a good picture now. That's kind of that's kind of how I want it to look. Okay, so it's been a long day, and I've been making a few mistakes along the way that uh, kind of might have set me back a little bit. So let's um, get something to sort it out of the way. It's not this one, it's this one. Okay, that's the one that I'm really working from. I made a huge error and lost what I was doing earlier. I lost what I was like working on uh, over the weeks, so I had to quickly rewatch all of my videos and try to figure out like what I'd done and how to get everything back. Now I've got to try and rebuild everything I just had a little while ago and try to uh, see if I can get something going. The library, display and text. Gosh, the amount of stuff I added into that class. Ah. Okay, so since I haven't had a real good session to uh, go through what I was going to do, I'm going to just do a practice here and if anyone's watching this video it would just be, you know, for pure fun's sake. What I'm going to do this episode is I'm trying to add a put menu into this game that will pause the game, stop you from being able to control the player, and make it so that you can and give us some. Uh, it will let me then create, you know, some interactions with this pause menu screen. So let's go about making a menu. I'm going to make an object called menu and a function called make menu. In the menu screen, um, I'm going to just give it a background for now. So menu.background is going to equal rectangle. Rectangle is going to be x0. No, I'm going to give it some padding. Yeah, padding. So I'm going to get a padding of t at 20 on the X scale and Y scale, the width and height. Let's do game screen minus 40, game screen, uh, game screen, <laughs> no, it's screen, what is it? Oh, it is game width, it is game width minus 40, game height minus 40. This is going to take up the entire screen minus this padding size. The fill is going to be... I'm not going to make it grey, I want it to be a shade of grey but with an opacity as well. Actually that was the stroke style I wanted, the grey stroke style. I want the... Um, there we go. The fill style to be black but with an opacity of about 66, maybe 99. 99, so around 98. Yeah, that's about 50%, I would say. And then the... Okay, this, this is going to look a bit ugly. Let's see if I can fix this up a sec. Uh, this shouldn't even be... There we go. Right. So what you're looking at here is we're going to give this menu a background which is going to be a rectangle that's going to have this uh, that's going to be a bit opacity down. 
screw this call the make the menu thing in let's see our on load function so make stage and we're going to draw floor make level make menu now we're going to see this well we should have seen it menu dot background dot layer equals minus five if I got the right file Maybe that's what was going on wrong. Missing a something after argument on the 206 line. Oh, it's a comma missing right there. There we go. 88 is a bit. How about. Wait, was 66 a better number? I think 66 is a. No, no. Alright, let's make it about 9. Make it nice. Okie dokie. Uh, A, B, B, B. B, B. There we go. Uh, it's still a bit... What if I just do five? Yeah, actually, because the blend mode was back to was where it should have been in the first place. So... Now to add in uh, some ch find some changes to the display place. We haven't been here for a while. Inside the display object, I want to add in a visible, which is going to be set to true by default. And then in the stage draw uh, function that we create, a uh, display function, I'm going to say if sprite dot visible with an exclamation mark if the sprite is if it's the sprite's visibility is set to false then I want to return I don't need to run these lines of code if it's not even going to be visible now back to here menu dot back ground dot visible equals false so for now, there we go, it's not even going to be visible, that's good. Now in our update function, duh, 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 duh. let's see, we need, I'm going to create a state, which is going to be set to normal for now. And then we're going to go through a switch over here, switch, state. Switches go through a list of arguments that you give it, so I can give it a few different arguments and tell it what to do in each case. So let's give it the case normal, and that's where I want mainly this game stuff to just run as normal. So when you make each case, like you do case and what the value of it would be, like in this case paused, we would put in some commands in between here and then do break. What was the other one there? Default or something like that. Case or default, I don't know. You know what? I don't want to do this either. I'm just going to do an if statement. If statement, if state is equal to normal. I never really did like switches anyway. They're just ugly to manage realistically. Else if state equals pause. My key is being really funny, The uh, <laughs> this one. Ooh, that's horrible. Bad keyboard, bad. Now I want to do some things here, uh, some, a pause and unpause function. So when I hit the when I pause the game uh, or unpaused it, it will be you know changing these states when certain events happen. So let's see, function pause game. 
I want the I want the menu dot background dot visible to equal true. And then function resume game menu dot background dot visible equals false. The other two things I want is the state, state, state. When you resume the game, I want the states to go to normal. And when you pause the game, I want the states to go to paused. Okay, that's fine. Now what I want it to do is this keyboard.listen function, I want it to add in a release into it called false. Then in here, key down, key up, let's see. I'm adding these now because I don't want this to be just one command inside the SIF statement. And what I'm going to do is keyboard.keys, key code, dot release, equals true. So when the key is being released, the this this um, inside it, we're going to say that it's now released. Also in here, Keyboard keys, key code, the press, uh, the release, it is full. So, yeah, whenever we've released the key, the release is set to true. Whenever we've pressed the key, the release will be set to false. But that isn't the only scenario that we will do that. For now, let's do a console.log key code because I just want to quickly find out two two buttons on here in the console. So first, the enter key and the backspace key. That's all I want you to know. 13 and 8. 13 and 8. I'm going to add listeners to 13 and 8 in the onload. is the enter key and 8 is our backspace key. Well, now we're both listening to both of these. In the update function I want, if we're in the normal state, um, if, how do we get the control keyboard? Right. If keyboard.keys.8 dot dot press no, no, released. If the enter key has been released, then we want to do pause game. I also want this key released to be set to false. And then we're going to do throw in a similar command into here. Instead of pause game, we do resume game. Mm -hmm. If normal, if keyboard dot keys dot eight dot released, pause game, resume game. Let's have a quick look at this. I've got my keys the wrong way around. So I wanted uh, on load. Uh, <laughs> I want it to be 
8 is enter and 13 is backspace and then over here is it all right no I was putting yeah 8 up here instead okay get get back there you now when I hit the enter key I can't move the player around and nothing is going on when I hit enter again it unpauses the game yep okay now we want to check for something else I'm going to say if the other key is released and by the other key I mean the backspace key I want to do remake game and then make level I'm going to do function remake game And basically, it's going to just make sure certain things are, you know, if level dot door level dot door equals this, if level dot key. Then key uh, level dot key is equal to this. So if the door and the key did not uh, had been picked up or deleted and removed, we are putting them back into the game. Now the player dot x and player dot y. Player dot x equals one hundred. Player dot y equals five hundred. If we also need to make sure of one other thing on the level key thing, so there might be a chance that the player is carrying the key, in which case the keys X and Y might be, you know, wrong and so on. We just need to do some checks to make sure that the stage has the key. So, level. Let's, if level dot key dot parent is equal to level dot player, level dot. Right, uh, level dot player that has key is equal to false and level st uh, stage dot add child level dot key right so the first command is if the door doesn't exist bring the door back if the key doesn't exist remake uh, br bring the key back else if the player has the key like if the level dot key dot parent is equal to the level dot parent and the level dot player, then we need to take the key away from the player while also setting the has key variable to false. Stage to add child level dot key. Yep, yep, yep. And then after this, we're going to set state equals normal. If I've got this all right. I hope I have. Oh, player is not defined. I've. Where have I done this wrong? Player dot x, player dot y. Okay, okay. Level dot player dot x. Level dot player dot y. Now it should. Uh... All right, and when we do set it to normal, 
instead of doing this set to normal, we do we'll use the uh, resume game function. Uh, I forgot one more thing. I forgot. So inside the when we've uh, let's see the, the, the it's good there we go there we go so when the key has been released if the key release is set to true we set it immediately to false so that we do not repeat it because that's what's going on here it's just stuck because we didn't ever set the release to false. So we've set it to false in this version. And now, when I hit back, enter, then backspace, after they've been released, we are triggering a refresh the game. And now if I do this, oh, oh my, I need to remake level, remake level, oh, come on, oh, come on. Make and remake level. The uh, all right. If uh, okay, the uh, level dot key dot x equals one hundred. Well, oh, the level dot key dot y equals one hundred. That's convenient. Level dot key dot width equals level dot key dot height equals thirty two. So now we're getting the. Uh, I've this will reset the. There we go, the key's position and its side dimensions are reset as well. When we do this, that's fine. Okay. I'm going to make now an end game screen. And state equals end menu dot background dot visible is going to equal to actually there we go. When I end the game, it's going to do the pause game, but set the state to end instead of setting it to pause as it normally would. Then in the else if over here, we're going to do another else if state equals end with spelling. Uh, I'm going to do this if the 13th keyboard button is released then we do the oh that's not the one I want the remake remake here so what I'm what I'm looking to do is create a remake the game function if we get to the end state and in order to get to the end state we're going to create a goalpost in the level so in our make level we're going to make now a goal post. Let goal post equals rectangle. And make sure I add it in here. This rectangle is going to have an X position a bit to the left of the door bit above the door, same dimensions, um, I'm going to try gold, see if that works with uh, yellow, give it a thicker border than the average, uh, let's give it a much thicker border than the average and take its dimensions here down a bit, 46, 46. 
Yeah, actually, I'm regretting this now. Let's just set it back to full. In fact, let's not give it any. None. Does that work? Yeah, that works. 50 by 50, then, please. Right, we're going to call that the goal, the goal post. Best looking goal post ever, I will have you know. And then... We're going to make a collision with it, so control character game loop inside the game loop. If hit test level dot player level dot goal post false, then we are going to do. How do we do it? End game. I think that's all I needed to do. Pause game, end state, yep. I don't need this all here then. So now if I pick up the key, I go to here, and it's hit there. I can't I can't just hit enter and unpause like before. I have to press the backspace button. What happened there? Look at that again in a second. Try to analyze what's going on there. So, in game, yeah, yep. Yeah. Update, state went to end. Make game. The key and the That's the first thing that seems to be problematic. The layer of the key and the door seem to be off their rocker. So when I rebake the door, the door layer, level dot door dot layer equals minus three, and the key layer needs to be minus three as well. So when we make game, key and the door are made. Here and there, then set right, and then when we do resume game after that, menu background visible equals false, and state would equal null. Let's try this once more and see if it looks like I've messed anything up. Yes, so what is going on here? Level dot player dot has key goes to false. Has key equals false. And then in our game loop over here, it should be testing if level dot door. Hmm. Go back to here and for a resume game, let's do console.log level player dot has key. sure this level key function was happening. I don't think I was called 
I don't think I was making sure that the has key was being set to false if the key had to be reintroduced to the level. Yeah. In fact, maybe I should just take it out of these if loops altogether. Level dot player dot has key equals false. Just for a set, you know, even if it was already set to false, we're making sure it is set to false. That's working back to normal. That's just how I wanted it to go. That's good. Very good. Now I want to add in a some text to make this easier for players to understand what is going on when we're entering these pause menus. It's been a while since we've been over to the text class and what we want, uh, the display class, library, yeah it's a library, we want to now create our second, uh, our third display object a text object. At least these might still be relevant when we start you replacing all of the rectangles with sprites. You never know. I do think there'll be a moment where all of these rectangles on this screen will be replaced with sprites either way. What we first need is our message xy a text color which is still going to be a fill style then we need a font, mm. a line, base, line, I think that's it. So let sprite equals new text with all these arguments being thrown in it. Stage to add child sprite return sprite it's basically the same text book stuff as before now we go inside the extends here we need a constructor all the all the arguments aside here a draw function as well and that should sort of just about cover what we want here. Now we first off we need some uh, defaults. I'm going to give it some defaults in here just to keep us safe. So let's give it a default of hello, x, y is zero, zero, a full style of white. A font style is going to be, mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna have to quickly look one up. So in the house side here, I'm going to go, Canvas um, text font font property hello uh, yeah fill text uh, font okay yep font styles font family that's what I was trying to specify I fancy Korean new so 30 pixels Korean new so our font style First off, it wants us to pick a size, it, which in this case, and we also need to make sure when we set the size that we set up the, uh, we put the little letters pixels after it as well. If we do not put PX after it, it will not read the numbers, the size that we give it. A line, I'm going, is basically like, if, you, if this was the starting point here, do you want the text to be to the left of it? Do you want it to be the right of it? I don't know. Do you want it to be like between the both of them? And that's what I'm going for, both. And the baseline is pretty much the same thing, but on the y-axis. Let me go through here a sec. Canvas reference, and it's baseline. Text baseline. I want middle. Okay, and then when we get to our draw function, where we'll have the context that's always passed through as a reference, we want to set context to, oh, before I get ahead of myself, constructor, first call off super, and then objects.assign this, and then all the arguments. 
x what message x y fill style font line base line that do now in the draw context we want to do context dot fill style equals this dot fill style and then uh, context dot use canva this this thing is it fill text I think it's fill text and the arguments would be this stop message and then zero zero because uh, uh, you know we're already using translate to get to the XY position now if I just quickly do a test over in script I'm going to do my onload uh, blah, 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 make menu I'm going to make a quick you know quick text is equal to text add hello xy position of game width times or divided by half game height divided by half yeah that's just about right it's a bit hard for you to see though there it's very very small why is it so small oh yeah right context dot we need to set up some of these things so font is it font style or is it just font c text font. all right context dot font equals this dot font context dot text align equals this dot text align context dot text base line equals this dot base line does that fix all that up yeah that fixes that up that's good is it center that doesn't look like center to me what's going on here ctx dot reverse strokes are move to text align this dot text this line just this line that's better Okay, that's more what I wanted. Now, with, uh, let's get rid of that a sec. I've got the text to go with, so when I want to hit a pause screen, I want the. I also want the uh, pause menu to show the text that I want to make. So let's see, where did I create the... I cr make level, remake, make menu. That was what I wanted. Menu.background.layer, menu.background.visible, okay. Now I want the same, but now I want our text. Menu.text equals text or paused. Game width times 0.5, game height times 0.5. There we go, and then menu dot text dot visible equals false. I just, I haven't refreshed it yet, but I just wanted to hit the pause button to see did the pause whiteness go above the uh, background, and it has, it's on top of the background, which is just where I want it. Now I might just make sure, uh, menu background layer dot equals six. Now I want to go to the resume and pause game functions where we set these menu background visibles to and then I want text.visible. Text.visible is false. And then end game, uh, yes, end game state, blah blah blah. Here is where I also want menu.text.message to equal you have finished. And then when we do remake game, I want menu dot 
text.message to equal paused. <laughs> Just a second. Visible equals false. Right. Menu is invisible. We hit the enter key. Pause now shows. If we unpause, it disappears. If we go and finish the game, you have finished. And if I hit to restart the game, the menu is gone back to this again. I'm going to just add to this uh, .text .line, um, make a menu please, another line of text, menu restart text equals Okay, so we've now had, I'm adding in this one extra line, press backspace to restart. This is going to have the same, uh, I'm going to set it up to have the same triggers as the text of visible. So the restart visible is going to be false, the restart layer is going to be equal to 6, that's fine. And then over here, when we change, whenever we change the text.visibility, we also want to change the menu.restarttext.visible equals false. And over here, it's true. So at every point, you have this prompt there that reads off, press backspace to restart. That looks fine and dandy to me, that's kind of how I imagined it going on. I don't think that was intended. Not quite intended. End. Hmm. If keyboard dot keys thirteen dot released keyboard dot keys dot thirteen dot released equals false. I think that was uh, the pause menu. This one, I hit the pause button, enter, and let go of it. So it was trying to trigger the pause thing as soon as I had restarted the game by pressing the backspace key. But with this added in line now, that will bug fix that. So I'm hitting restart key. It should not be released in because this one extra line we just added. So when I hit backspace, okay, yeah, that's not happening now. Finicky uh, menu, menu uh, gooey. <laughs> The amount of gooey work I'm doing here to get this to behave. Now, to finish this off, I wanted to add just two little enemies to the game, which are going to be pathetic, but they are enemies nonetheless. So enemy A is going to be a rectangle. Copy, paste a little. And the enemy B is a copy paste of A. Now we want to give them some good positions and I want to make put them into certain places. I want to, one somewhere between the key and the player and the next one to be somewhere in the way of getting in the way of the door. Uh, but let's see. Let's use the blocks to help me understand where how far down they go. So it's around 250. I could say 200 on the Y position. This would be about 300, and then on the X scale, this would be about 150, and the other one would be about 500. And I want red, and is there a dark red? That would be convenient. Is there a dark red? 
It doesn't seem to be a dark red. Oh well. Right, the position is down to 350, by the way, because otherwise he was kind of overlapping in a place he shouldn't be. I'm going to add those to the uh, level. Did dark red work? I think it did work. There we go. Now in the game loop, we want to add two hit tests. So if hit tests level dot player level dot enemy a hit test is set to false by default, right? Yeah, it's set to be now if it hits the enemy a or if it hits enemy b. I'll make this a bit easier to, for you to sort of make up what I've said here. Inside this if statement, we if, I'm using these pipes. They basically the, like saying the word or. So if the hit, if we do a hit test with enemy A and returns positive, or if we do a hit test with enemy B and it returns positive, then we want to do something and that something is going to be I'm going to do end game I'm also going to hit the menu text to you were caught or well, you've been caught State equals end. Uh, let's see. End game. Oh, this will do the state equals end anyway. Okay. Uh, menu. Uh, I could just do like menu. Uh, menu. Uh. So it basically does all the same things as end game. I'm just making sure end. But the message is going to say you've been caught. You have been caught. So now if I hit this, you have been caught. Press backspace to restart. You've been caught. Okay. I'm going to make these enemies just a little more interesting for some sake of uh, <laughs> sanity. Um, we're going to have them both moving in their own little ways. An X and Y axis for them with some collision detection going on to bounce them back between the blocks. On the make level function, the first thing I want to do is let uh, enemy a dot uh, move equals true, and the same for b. I'll what I want to set is like the direction they're going in. So if move is set to true, I want the axis that they're moving in to increment. So the x-axis, I want it to go up if it's if move is set to true. If move is set to false, I want the axis to go down. That's what I am planning to do here. Uh, let's see. Um, I want to make two quick functions for them. So move function move enemy x. And it's going to be passed an enemy reference, and then function move enemy y passed an enemy reference. Level dot enemy a. Oh, I'm going. To, no, I have to call it this way. <laughs> call the function first. Move enemy x, and then put the enemy inside it, and the same thing for the other function with the enemy B inside it. There we go. Then inside each of these what we are going to quickly run is a check. So if, what, what did we call it again? 
if enemy A dot move, All right? If enemy dot move. Mm -hmm. Oh, I need Delta as well. Delta, please. I'm going to need to move it at a specific frame rate, of course, like we do with the control player. So we need the speed. Let speed equals zero. And, oh, I, I want it to be 300. Yeah, I could make it 400. Then move faster than the player that way. Yeah. Then, actually, uh, if enemy move, speed equals delta times speed, else speed equals delta times minus speed. So, what this is accomplishing is if the enemy is set to ink if the enemy's move is set to positive then speed is going to be a positive speed multiplied by the delta and then if the enemy move is set to false we want it to move to left or up then we want a minus speed with a minus 400 speed times by delta that's fine. And let's go to this update function. No, no, uh, game dip function. Make sure that level eight, all right, we need to pass the delta in. We pass delta into both of these so that the enemy knows how fast to move. Enemy dot x um, add equals speed. And uh, we'll do the same for y in a second. Next up, we need to do collision tests. And in order to do that, and I'm going to be lazy about it, I'm going to just copy paste this over here. In certain worlds, in other worlds, you might hit test only for like this wall here and this wall here. But because I'm being lazy about this, I'm just going to do this with uh, the every block. Now and then inside here, we're going to do if test yep if the hit test happens then enemy dot move equals the opposite of what enemy dot move is if you understand me so yeah this basically means enemy move is going to equal the opposite of what enemy move is with a boolean or a you know true false statement Doing this thing is basically like flicking the light switch from on to off or off to on position. And this is basically going to do the same thing but in the Y axis. Now, I think this works. Yes, and now these objects are moving and we have to be like, oh, but, uh, oh I got caught. So there we go, we have actually got some semblance of challenge here. Quite nifty, isn't it? It's not the hardest game you've ever seen, but this is like finish, you know, this has got a good finished marker on it, I would say. I like this. In the future, I will be tidying a lot of this up and making it more cleaner to look at, perhaps. I'll, you know, hide or tuck away a lot more of these functions into other places where they'll just be less in the way and look a little tidier. But I feel like this is kind of reached my initial goal where I just wanted to create a simplistic game that could have a start and an end, a restart kind of function to it and something uh, that passes for enemies or AI. We have a stretch of the imagination of course. This is a bit of a stretch of the imagination but they're enemies, okay? They are. Oh, they, 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 they hurt their player, see? You've been caught. 
naming stuff. And now there's this menu. You can restart the game. That's all. That's something I wanted. There's a key and a door unlocking system. That's cool. And then when you hit the finish goal, boom! You can. It's saying you've finished. Woohoo! So it has a game up. It has a pause screen, a game over screen, and a finished screen. You now have interaction with a goalpost and enemy objects added in, as well as you already had interaction with a key and a door programmed in. That's all quite fair and dandy, I reckon. Right. I feel like. I'm going to have to look at this later to make sure this uh, might need a bit of trimming out or I might have to redo this all together, but I will consider this video just done for the moment. Next time I'm going to start looking into, or over the week, I'm going to start looking into how to scale this up and start creating some better functioning level, like containing the data and passing the information around, but or like you know, creating a second level, loading the second level, uh, or creating a third level, and so on. How to how, like looking at how to store multiple levels and their information, possibly inside arrays with like you know, the arrays could have nested. The, uh, the nested loads of information. The arrows could also contain like oh, they lived their own lists of objects and then when we would create each level it would simply have to read the array and place all the objects at the right places. We could also replace our floor and the walls with grids instead of these solid blocky objects that we've created. So when we did make level we've got this list of blocks here. We could also we could just replace that with uh, a grid of, you know, like the floor we're standing on, the tiles here could be representing blocks instead. So if the next tile I'm about to walk into is marked as a wall type of tile, then it will block movement and we could do the same for the enemy blocks. It makes the collision detection a lot simpler in some places to handle. One step at a time anyway. I hope that you've liked watching this series so far and we'll, we'll continue this shortly. Take care for now.